everyone and welcome back to 2k14 universe I'm your host Stitch and you're watching Monday Night Raw It was two years ago on this very brand that Dolph Ziggler, just over a week after winning the United States Championship, was screwed out of the title. He has not held a single singles championship since 2010, May of 2010 to be specific. And uh, he's coming out here tonight, he's putting his United States Championship on the line willingly, Dolph Ziggler has said that uh, he wants to defend his championship tonight against any comer, anyone willing to step up to the challenge. And immediately, it was answered in a WWE.com exclusive by this man, Jack Swagger, the real American. I'm a little bit confused. I could have scored Dolph had a championship entrance in this game, but I guess not. <clears throat> I thought he had the one where he like turned it backwards. But maybe that was in like 15 or something that they added that. I don't I don't really remember. Anyway, Jack Swagger has come here back to Monday Night Raw, the place where this man is a former world heavyweight champion. The draft behind us, some huge changes made. And I gotta say. There's some pretty big ones. Sorry, I thought there was going to be the uh, bit that gets cut from the video there, but it wasn't at all that. It was the United States Championship graphic. <laughs> I want to say this this should be a good way to kick off this new edition of Raw. Brand new roster coming your way here tonight. Stone Cold Steve Austin set to compete against The Miz in our main event. Batista and Antonio Cesaro later on. It's a big one. Dolph Ziggler set to go one-on-one -on -one with Jack Swagger, and I've got to tell you, this man is not going to give up his United States Championship easily. Nice move there by Dolph. Great way to start this match off. We've got the new WWE Tag Team Champions 3MB, who are officially a part of Monday Night Raw, the first time the Tag Team Championships have ever changed brands. The WWE Tag Team title is now a part of Monday Night's. And uh, we've been told 3MB are looking forward to their Raw debut here tonight, which uh, technically isn't even a debut for two out of three of them, as uh, Jinder Mahal and Slater were already here on Raw, but Drew McIntyre makes his Raw return, where he made uh, history as the longest reigning World Tag Team Champion alongside uh, Sheamus, who is the European Champion of on SmackDown right now. I don't feel like Sheamus very much agrees with the uh, change in styles that Drew McIntyre has undergone becoming a member of 3MB, but I don't think Drew McIntyre cares. I think this is a man who is living his life to the fullest right now, and it's working out for him. He's already a W Tag Team Champion. But of course, the United States Championship once again home to Monday Night Raw. Championship was initially a part of Monday Night Raw back when we first started in 2009. It was drafted away in the 2011 draft, I believe. Or was it the 2010 draft? I believe it was the 2011 draft, yeah, because it was last year that the Intercontinental Championship was brought back here and it was won by The Miz. Whilst the United States Championship was taken from Raw to SmackDown. Uh, I, I, remember who, I believe it was by Drew McIntyre. don't know how I forgot that. He was technically retired this time last year. I'll tell you, Ziggler has gotten off to a strong start here, but Swagger putting up a little bit more of a fight than we've been used to. He says that coming back here to Raw is a real homecoming for him. It's time to get serious, as uh, this is the place where he was a former World Heavyweight Champion. He feels like he's been nothing but disgraced during his time over on Friday Night SmackDown, and history will not repeat itself. He will be... United States Champion before the time is up. We'll be seeing a debuting diva later on tonight as Caitlyn is set to go one-on-one -on -one with Natalia. 
Looking forward to seeing the debut of Caitlyn. We've got three new Divas here on, well, in the WWE, I was about to say on Monday Night Raw. Aksana, Caitlyn, and Summer Rae. Caitlyn, the first of the three to make her debut. Couple of attempt here by Dolph Ziggler. And a quick kick out by Jack Swagger in this United States Championship matchup. Extreme Rules, Raw's uh, first pay-per-view in the new season comes your way in uh, just over three weeks' time. Uh, which brings me to our main event tonight and the match before. I mentioned that uh, Antonio Cesaro will be facing Batista and that Stone Cold Steve Austin in our main event will be facing off against The Miz. These are both going to be qualifying matches. We'll be having two more uh, similar themed qualifying matches next week on Raw. I don't know who the participants will be just yet. But uh, we're going to have uh, a set of qualifying matches. And then in two weeks' time here on Raw, we're going to be having ourselves a fatal four-way matchup. Huge gut wrench powerbomb on Dolph Ziggler could mark the end of Dolph Ziggler's United States Championship brain very prematurely. And Dolph able to kick out nice and quickly. Swagger is very, very much in control right now. Dolph Ziggler seems to be really struggling to find his way to start off this United States Championship matchup. And Swagger is willing to do everything he can to steal that championship from Dolph Ziggler. What is this? Oh, oh, oh! Well, that was new. Dolph now delivering elbows. You gotta think this man went through hell and back to get that shot against Damian Sandow for the United States Championship at WrestleMania. He finally won it. He finally became United States Champion. I don't think he's gonna be willing to let that one go too easily. And these fans are very much in support of Dolph Ziggler as he heads to the top elbow troll. Never mind, Dolph continues to be in control of the match. Looks like Jack Swagger has found himself back in this one. And Ziggler now calling for it. There's the zigzag by the United States Champion. Cover attempt here on Swagger. Has he retained the title? Yes. What a way to kick off Monday Night Raw. I'm going to say this was a good competitive matchup. This was the best we've seen Jack Swagger in a good long while. And I think he's definitely not misguided to say that his return to Raw could be a successful one. <laughs> Huge props to our defending United States champion. What a great competitive matchup. Ziggler managing to survive the gut wrench power bomb before pulling off the zigzag for the win. Well deserved, successful championship retention here tonight on Raw as we move on. Uh, up next, the new WWE Tag Team Champions. 3MB are in action as they face off against the former Intercontinental Champion Justin Gabriel and the former Cruiserweight Champion Kofi Kingston. We need new challenges for the WWE Tag Team Championships as it currently stands. Extreme Rules is only three weeks away. We've got two more Raws after tonight before Extreme Rules. And uh, obviously the former World Tag Team Champions, Awesome Truth, have been separated. But on top of that, the former WWE Tag Team Champions are still over on SmackDown. These two didn't exactly pull out their most matching gears here tonight, but Kofi Kingston and Justin Gabriel, they are um, the African Sensations, is what I would build them as. That is not their actual name, don't worry. <laughs> they don't have a team name, but uh, two proud African superstars, fantastic wrestlers, high flyers, incredible performers all around, and of course, former champions both uh, lost their championships at WrestleMania. 
But uh, I'll tell you who really picked up big at WrestleMania. That was this brand new unit. I can't wait to see them make their raw debut, well, their re-debut almost. You know, we weren't expecting this 3MB. We knew that Heath Slater and uh, uh, Drew McIntyre were the contenders for the WWE Tag Team Championships. But I don't think anyone could have expected this as the suspense is building. We are just waiting oh boy <laughs> i cannot wait to stop waiting for this to end because i hate when i get left with the loading screen it's awkward here they come the brand new tag team champions It's a shame that didn't work. I'd set it up so that uh, Jinder Mahal would have a tag team title as well, but it didn't do it. That's a shame. Oh well. Maybe next time. But uh, Jinder Mahal does have his own WWE Tag Team Championship belt in the works. Uh, a lot of people have been asking, will these guys be defending under the Freebird rule? Well, I say, who the hell are the Freebirds? They don't exist in this universe. <laughs> no, uh, they, uh, to my understanding, no is the answer to that. It will be Heath Slater and Drew McIntyre that are your WWE Tag Team Champions. I don't know why they've gone for the red again. I feel like there wasn't a red they wore at WrestleMania. I. The thing about this game is that it actually has a function to select the tires itself, so I just let it do that. I love this entrance so much. <laughs> I can never explain just quite the joy that I'm brought when I see these three together. Yeah, why not? Well, here we go. So it's Heath Slater starting things off against Kofi Kingston. Uh, I'm, I forgot about the time limit glitch. When you press next match, you know, actually got a time limit. That's okay. I don't really mind that too much. It's mostly for pay-per-views. I think I'll try to make sure the time limit is... For, as long as it still functions, and if we go past the 20-minute mark, the match ends. I think it still works. It just doesn't show you what the time is. I, th I think, anyway. I'm not entirely sure about that. <clears throat> Heath Slater starting things off for the WWE Tag Team Champ as he faces off against Kofi Kingston. I don't really know of a lot of tag teams on Raw right now. I know we got The Click, uh, Shawn Michaels and Kevin Nash. I believe they've uh, got a special message to be delivered. They say that they are now the New World Order and that, uh, that this name is representative of the fact that they will be taking over both Monday Night Raw and Friday Night Smackdown as obviously we saw the former X-Pac now known as Six Park. Uh, six for short. Uh, we now know that he is over on SmackDown. Apparently, he's got a new ally with him. There'll be two versions of the NWO, one here on Raw, one on SmackDown. But they are one unit as a whole that is taking over the WWE from the inside out, apparently. We'll see about that. Drew McIntyre with a clothesline adjusting Gabriel. And I'm going to say, these are two superstars I don't think I've seen Drew McIntyre step it up in the ring with. But of course, we can't forget about all the history between Heath Slater and Justin Gabriel. Those two have actually formally held the WWE Tag Team Championships that are now held by uh, Heath Slater and Drew McIntyre. Of course, you may have noticed that the WWE Tag Team Championships underwent a design change. Uh, the former design of the WWE Tag Team Championships is very blue, very SmackDown prominent. We've decided to go for a uh, more neutral kind of design as to fit uh, them being here on Raw. I've been told that new World Tag Team Championships will be debuted over on SmackDown as well, for those that are curious. Uh, so maybe if you see Jericho in action this Friday, you'll see the new World Tag Team titles. Take the middle section there by Drew McIntyre. WWE Champion The Rock getting the night off here tonight, and by the sounds of it, we'll be having next week off too, as we look to find who the contender for the WWE, ta I mean, the WWE Championship will be. We won't find out until six days before Extreme Rules, in the outcome of a big fatal four-way matchup to headline Raw in two weeks' time. I can't wait to see who it's going to be, you know. As I mentioned before, we got Antonio Cesaro and Batista tonight. We've got Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Miz, two former WWE Champions, two people who actually rivaled over the WWE Championship at one point. It was Austin who uh, lost the championship to The Miz via a Money in the Bank cash-in. 
So uh, things come in full circle here tonight in that situation. And of course the WWE Champion, The Rock, I gotta imagine, very much prepared for whatever is to come when it comes to the WWE Championship right now. You know, I think about superstars on Raw that were probably in high consideration to be competing in the WWE Championship uh, four-way qualifiers. I think people like Brock Lesnar, Shawn Michaels, Kevin Nash. There's some great superstars here on Raw. And obviously, I think there's still some that we are yet to see make their debut. As we have been told, there are some new names coming to Monday Night Raw. Obviously, there are a lot of people that will be working their way up from NXT, as you'll be seeing every Wednesday. Or is it Tuesday? I believe it's Wednesday. Yeah, I believe it's every Wednesday we'll be seeing that. And, uh... <clears throat> In the meantime, there will be a few that will have to skip that line as the NXT roster is a little smaller than the amount of newcomers that we've got for you here this season. Very back and forth between these two as Jinder Mahal seems to be uh, pulling some shenanigans with the referee at ringside there. I'm not entirely sure why. McIntyre seems to be doing just fine on his own. I do wonder what went wrong for Edge and Christian at WrestleMania. Those two have been an untouchable tag team, and I think obviously Heath Slater and Drew McIntyre, you're talking about two prospects, two people that have worked their way up and both been insanely impressive in their singles competitions. But uh, with that being said, um, it does feel strange to me that Edge and Christian lost at WrestleMania. I wonder if perhaps uh, another opportunity at the World Tag Team Championships is looming. Obviously, Edge and Christian were not separated by the draft, and uh, Edge has got his history with Chris Jericho. They're former tag team partners, so I don't know how that's going to work out. Kofi now chopping away. Drop kick here to Drew McIntyre. you got to think if uh, Kofi Kingston and Justin Gabriel can defeat 3MB here tonight, that's a tag team title opportunity extreme rules for sure. Big leg drop by Kofi Kingston. Connecting on Drew McIntyre as Justin Gabriel heads into the ring to try and keep Heath Slater at bay, but Jinder Mahal is just too many. It's just a numbers game here, as they like to say. The numbers game, the numbers game. And Kofi Kingston catching Drew McIntyre under the rebound. Looked like he went for the SOS, but there was a little bit of miscommunication between Kofi and Gabriel there that led to uh, Justin Gabriel accidentally bumping into Kofi Kingston mid SOS. That's unfortunate. Elbow drop to the back of Kofi almost. I'm liking what both uh, Kofi and, and Gabriel have done with their hair this season. Very nice. Happy for them. <laughs> Off the ropes here. Drew McIntyre and oh, Lee Slater with a little flapjack there to Justin Gabriel. Is that going to be the finishing point in this tag team matchup? Kofi Kingston just about able to prevent that one from coming to an end. Are you saying seriously calling for the tag again? We get it, you guys function great as a team. You don't have to keep tagging in and out this much, though. This match is kind of weirdly broken down right now. I guess I still can't really trust the AI to do a tag match too well. <clears throat> Honestly, I just think the AI can be a little bit clunky with how it handles matches. I wonder if this will work. Mm, no. Oh, okay. Mm, oh, wow. Okay, those don't normally work in this game, if I remember right. That's a, okay, well, he kind of blew it. He just stood there. Caught into a smash hit DDT from Heath Slater as he goes for the cover on Kofi Kingston. It's over. Justin Gabriel may be fast on his feet, but he just wasn't fast enough. And the WWE Tag Team Champions pick up a victory in their Raw debut as a trio. I said it before, I'll say it again. I am looking forward to seeing what all three of these do over the next season. I think this is going to be a group of people that you are going to want to keep your eyes peeled on. Phenomenal superstars, phenomenal performances as always. Drew McIntyre, Heath Slater, and of course bringing up Jinder Mahal with them, I'd say. 
This is going to be a good time for the Tag Team Champions. Moving towards our next match, it's time for the Divas. The following Divas contest is scheduled for football. Making her way to the ring. From Calgary, Alberta, Canada, Natalia. Well, she's a seasoned veteran at one at uh, at this point, I'd say. Sorry, I can't quite get my words out there. Uh, Natalia, Layla, Tiny Shiny, and the Bella Twins, I believe, are the only women who have been around since the very beginning, and uh, they are still all here. And here tonight, this veteran Natalia, former Divas Champion, former Women's Champion, she's set to go one on one with the debuting Caitlyn. Be interested in seeing what Caitlyn can bring to the table for the Divas division. Obviously, as I mentioned before, uh, Lita is very much at the very level of her own right now after knocking off AJ Lee at WrestleMania. I feel like there isn't really anyone that can step up to uh, the Divas champion right now. So maybe that's where Caitlyn can step in. I'm not entirely sure. Obviously, we've not seen her compete yet, so I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but... This will be a good uh, opportunity for her to try and prove herself. She's up against a very successful former champion. Natalia, no stranger to uh, picking up the odd victory. No, no, no. Sorry. It's just... <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to leave the, the bit where I shuffle who I'm going to play in or not. But uh, Natalia quickly in with a backdrop there on Caitlyn. It looks like already this one has not gotten off to a good start for this newcomer. I mean, the thing is, you can't expect to go in there with a, with a veteran like Natalia and be successful all the time. Now, if the thing about Caitlyn that she's got to remember is if she does lose here tonight, she's got to see this as a learning experience. I'm not saying that she will lose, I'm saying that if she does, there is a silver lining that she's going to have to bear in mind, as hard as it may be to accept. I'm trying to remember that uh, it doesn't matter whether you're going to lose right now, it's all about making a good first impression. I have a weird feeling that this isn't actually uh, her debut and that she competed on Superstars. <laughs> I don't remember what happened on Superstars, so I recorded it like three weeks ago. The first week I did uh, right after finishing 13, and then I did all of 30 years of WrestleMania, and now I'm back recording this, um, like almost a whole month later. So I don't really, I probably should have looked over those videos. That's a big whoops on my part. Natalia is really enjoying schooling the newbie. She's really struggling to get going here. And, oh god! Discus clothesline by Natalia. This is really not uh, turning out to be Caitlyn's night here. Can't help but notice that Caitlyn's got a little bit more muscle definition than most of the average divas. We haven't seen someone uh, quite as built as Caitlyn since Beth Phoenix was around. So, I mean, I had a lot of hope in that sense, but you know, unfortunately, a physical uh, stature isn't everything in wrestling. And right now, she just really seems to be struggling to get off the ground. But saying that, she's doing a little better here. Yeah. This match has been 100 miles an hour since the opening bell. So it's suplex there by Natalia sends Caitlyn to oh boy. Now Natalia looking for the finishing hold. The sharpshooter has been applied. Caitlyn has basically got to get to the ropes or submit. I don't think there is another option for her right now. I mean, she could use her strength to power out, but 
I think she's pretty much in the ropes, ref. There you go. And that was definitely not great to see so early on here. Natalia busting out the sharpshooter. Finishing move of the current Intercontinental Champion over on SmackDown, Brett the Hitman Hart, who will be making his SmackDown debut soon, I'm sure. That championship, no stranger to Friday nights, where it first found its prestige. Side suplex by Caitlyn. She takes down Natalia. I can't believe everything that's transpired this far. Means it's scooping her up. Ooh, and a big knee to the gut. Will this be enough? Can Caitlyn pin a former champion in Natalia? No, not even close. Natalia very quick there with a clothesline. And now going in for yet another submission hold here. Is she going to be able to force Caitlyn to tap out? The cameraman, he's shaking with nervousness right now. He just can't believe what he's seeing. When Natalia decided to release the hold there. Ooh, knee to the gut there by Caitlyn. Another one. She uh, really likes them knees to the gut, I'll tell you that much. Caitlyn looking for some kind of a finishing move here? What could she have in store? Spear, okay. All right. A big spear from Caitlyn to Natalia. Cover attempt here on this former champion, and Caitlyn picks up a very important victory. She may have struggled to get going for a lot of the match, but I'll tell you what, when she got going, Caitlyn was the winner, and that's what matters. I do apologize if this wasn't actually her debut. I really don't remember that episode of Superstars. <laughs> None of that makes it okay. I just, I'm just saying I really don't remember it. Well, Caitlyn is victorious here tonight against Natalia, and this will go a long way in helping build her some momentum. You know, the Divas Championship has got to be defended at Extreme Rules. You never know. You never, never know. Well, anyway, we now move on. It is time for our next match of the night. Antonio Cesaro and former World Heavyweight Champion Batista. Two former Royal Rumble winners set to go one-on-one -on -one to find out who will take part in the number one contender's fatal four-way for the WWE Championship. bitterness, the frustrations of losing in the uh, WrestleMania 3 main event, the first Royal Rumble winner to come up short at WrestleMania. The pressure is on for Antonio Cesaro here tonight. He sees had to go one-on-one -on -one with Batista, the former World Heavyweight Champion, someone who's been there in that same position as Antonio Cesaro and come out on top at WrestleMania. calls himself a real American and I'm sure he's not too pleased with the outcome of the United States Championship match between his partner Swagger and Dolph Ziggler at the start of tonight's show but here comes Batista what a great sight to see him again here on Monday nights what a great sight to see him in general he promised he'd be back in a year he stayed true to that promise This former world champion made his return at WrestleMania 3, a destroying Brock Lesnar, something that we have never seen anyone be able to do before. And I am very much looking forward to seeing what goes down here tonight. Batista got a lot weighing on this one. He wants to be a world champion again. He wanted Lesnar to keep that world title. He wanted to be the one to take it off of him. 
one year later. Lesnar was able to do that, and uh, I guess Batista's now sending his sights on The Rock and the WWE Championship, and I can only imagine what a great match that would be. Oh boy. Nothing good can come from that. Antonio Cesaro still can outside. Come on! Not like this. Not like. Oh, wow. Batista, you had a lot of time to react to that. Antonio Cesaro taking a real shortcut here. This is despicable. Well, Batista has had a chair cracked over him multiple times to kick off this match. And then dropped on it. I mean, ref, come on, you've got to be able to tell that there's scraps of a chair there. Maybe check back on some footage or something. Anything. Maybe uh, disqualify the man who's conveniently in control. Well, Batista with a great reversal there over Antonio Cesaro. This is a man who has promised that he will not let anything deter his momentum. That he will be a world champion before long. Of course, then Antonio Cesaro going to target the head of Batista. It makes a plenty of sense after he just cracked the chair over it multiple times. This is completely unfair. A lot of people have been looking forward to seeing Batista make his return here tonight. Myself, one of them, and this is not the way that this match should have ever gone down. And come, come, Antonio Cesaro re removing a turnbuckle here. Batista nor the referee saw that. Guess whatever it takes, huh? Whatever it takes. Nice clothesline there by the animal. Big belly to belly suplex there by Antonio Cesaro as he lifts Batista up to his feet. And now, we're going to deadlift Batista up for a suplex. Good attempt here by Antonio Cesaro. I'll tell you what, if he does win this match, it's going to be very tarnished by the way in which he decided to do it. I think this man knew exactly what he was doing when he laid out that referee. Batista, no, 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 no. Oh, face first into the exposed turnbuckle. Tell you that WrestleMania loss has really eaten away at Antonio Cesaro. Ooh, what an uppercut. Cover attempt here by Cesaro on Batista. And he still manages to kick out. You do not often see Batista get treated like this. But you gotta pay close attention to the way this match started. I'm not trying to discredit Antonio Cesaro, he's a great competitor, we really saw him give Triple H a run for his money for the World Heavyweight Championship. But with that being said, I still well and truly believe that Antonio Cesaro does not need to function the way he is in this match here tonight. How are you doing, Batista? Now Batista sent, oh wow, okay, smart move by Batista, pulled himself into the ring instead of colliding with the steel steps. I respect that. I mean, in the end he got a boot to the head, so, you know, it's not too great of a trade-off, but. Batista taking back control here, and you gotta think, this is only angering the animal father. This guy just came back off of a year-long injury. I don't imagine he wants to come up short here tonight in this qualifying match. Referee, uh, I mean, commentary a little bit behind there. In the corner. Batista manages to turn things around for himself once again. Driving the knee into the face of Antonio Cesaro. Cover attempt here. Not enough. In an early kick out by Cesaro. The uppercut connects. A huge uppercut there by Antonio Cesaro. 
And you just never know what Antonio is going to bust out next. This guy's got a hell of a uh, collection of moves up his sleeve. Bear hug. Batista using his brute strength to take back control of this matchup, despite the damage dealt to his head. Headbutt there by Antonio Cesaro. Perhaps signaling that it is time for the neutralizer as he once again lifts Batista up like it's nothing. Antonio going in for the cover. There was a bit too much hesitance there, but it still ended up paying off for him, pinning Batista here tonight to advance to the four-way contenders match and I gotta say this was not a deserved victory. Here is your winner, Antonio Cesaro. Absolutely He's got a steel chair and an exposed turnbuckle to thank for that one. Antonio Cesaro really cheating his way in to a contenders match for the WWE Championship and I'd love to know how exactly he plans on cheating his way through the four-way match in two weeks time. You know it's going to be three of Raw's absolute best that he's up against. And honestly, I believe Batista deserves another chance to qualify after the way this one went down, but that's just me. Anyway, moving on to our main event now. Former WWE Champions Collide. It was uh, two years ago over on SmackDown that The Miz cashed his WWE Championship Money in the Bank contract on Stone Cold. Well, he's going to pay the price for that tonight when those two go one on one. And I'll tell you, Stone Cold is more dangerous than ever right now. Well, the Miz had a few comments to say about uh, his loss of his former tag team partner, R-Truth, following their tag team championship loss at WrestleMania, which also symbolically ended uh, the Miz's win streak at WrestleMania. I believe he'd won at both WrestleManias beforehand. Is that right? He retained the WWE Championship, WWE Tag Team Champion for WrestleMania 1. I believe WrestleMania 2. He might have actually been absent from WrestleMania 2, so it might have only been the one WrestleMania. But even still, uh, he has said that he is wishing uh, R-Truth well over on Friday Night Smackdown, but it's time for him to now take any dead weight off. It's time for him to focus on him, and it's time to get back to being WWE Champion. I think this is going to be a pretty hefty roadblock for him. Uh, this definitely comes off as a very imposing opponent for The Miz to be dealing with. Stone Cold Steve Austin. Someone that The Miz did win his WWE Championship from in the first place. And he went on to be one of the longest reigning WWE Champions in history. But uh, with that being said, uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin never really got a fair shot at the WWE Championship again. This man has been waiting a long time for a world championship opportunity and after suffering a loss to The Undertaker at Wrestlemania a couple of weeks back, I have a funny feeling that Stone Cold Steve Austin has got a lot on his mind right now and that he is going to unload all of that onto The Miz the moment he gets in the ring. This is our main event tonight. I'm going to let this one play out. I want to see what happens. This is our main event tonight. As I mentioned before, two former WWE champions. I say at the moment that Miz is one of the longest reigning WWE champions because as the way he is currently being worked on, we're currently tallying up how long JBL's reign was. I believe JBL has actually held the WWE Championship for longer than the Miz. I believe the Miz is... Uh, Longest reign record has been broken by JBL, but that is still to be determined. Even still, you know, the Miz, a former Dewey champion, multi-time Intercontinental champion, many, many tag team championships under his belt. This guy has done a hell of a lot with his career, and I'm sure he's got his sights set on another opportunity to face The Rock 
in the near future, but he's got Stone Cold Steve Austin standing across him in the ring right now, and I think that's going to be a bigger setback than anything else ever could. Two days time on NXT, the NXT Championship Tournament will continue. So far advancing in that tournament, we know Titus O'Neil, Razor Ramon and Seth Rollins have all made advances in the NXT Championship Tournament. There is much more to come every Wednesday on NXT as the roster continues to not only be unveiled, but we continue to find out who will be uh, the first ever NXT Champion. And I just have to quickly make sure that the names I listed were correct. As, uh, again, it's been a while since I recorded. Recorded Universe, that is. I've been recording 30 years from so many a lot over the last few weeks. That's a very long mode. Awesome take and control. It's nice to know I can actually leave the AI to play some of these matches. And it won't do a terrible job. It's really, really nice to know that. We have been told that uh, Batista's loss tonight will not be in vain. Uh, he will not be given another opportunity to qualify for the WWE Championship match right now, but instead, as per requested following their WrestleMania match, Batista, instead of competing in the WWE Championship situation, he has been challenged to a rematch at Extreme Rules with Brock Lesnar. Those two will meet again, the stipulation still to be decided. But Brock Lesnar and Batista one on one once again at Extreme Rules. Brock Lesnar are currently taking some time away following his WrestleMania loss. We may not see him again until Extreme Rules. But I tell you, I'm very much looking forward to seeing what happens when Lesnar is a little bit more prepared for Batista. I think the initial shock of the return of Batista really made things factor in Batista's favor. All the work and out, you know, the time waiting, building up to that moment, WrestleMania coming back. I think it's going to be very interesting to see what happens now that Batista is, you know, back in the swing of things. Lesnar knows he's back. There's no surprises. Just a one-on-one -on -one brutal battle between two of the best. Power driver there by Stone Cold Steve Austin. So Austin now dragging this to the center of the ring. Time's moving. What's he going to do here? Go for some kind of a submission, maybe. Miz goes to his feet. Interesting to see Miz rocking a new style here tonight. Uh, doesn't really seem to matter too much right now, whilst Austin's absolutely wailing on him. Austin with that Thez press going for the cover. Has he won this one? Not yet. And I say not yet because I think it's unfortunately true that the Miz maybe doesn't stand much of a chance in this one. Oh, right to the eye though. That's uh, one way to try and turn back the momentum in your favor, I suppose. Bulldog on the Miz. And a knee left across the face of the Miz. Stone Cold Steve Austin measure. And here comes that Stone Cold Stunner. Dropped him. Pretty sure the Miz has felt victim to that at least once before in his life. He knows exactly what he's in for when he sets foot in the ring with the, with, with Stone Cold Steve Austin. That being said, okay, that may be one of the things that helped factor in Miz surviving this match. Still, he kicks the leg out from Stone Cold Steve Austin. Austin to kick out very quickly though. Miz turning him over. Looks like he was going for a skull crushing finale, but Austin reverses it. Only had gone in for a move of his own afterwards, that would have been a cool sequence. But a back body drop by Austin, yeah, here we go again. Austin doesn't want to waste any time advancing to that four-way match. Stunner drops down the Miz. <clears throat> Pulling Miz away from the ropes now as Austin goes in for the cover on the Miz. And it will be Stone Cold Steve Austin joining Antonio Cesaro in that fatal four-way in two weeks time and right now we know half the playing field in that number one contenders match we still have two more qualifying matches coming your way next week on raw but this has been a big night for bald men with bad attitudes <laughs> because antonio cesaro and stone cold steve austin have qualified for the wwe championship contenders four-way 
in two weeks' time. I can't wait to see what surprises the Raw General Manager, Stephanie McMahon, has in store for us. I feel like there's something looming, something that we are just waiting to see. I can't wait to find out exactly what that is. But uh, we'll find out next week, perhaps, as right now, this one is over. Thank you all for tuning in to this episode of Monday Night Raw, and I'll see you Wednesday night on NXT when we continue the hunt to find out the first NXT champion.